Greetings, science maximites. Today, we're gonna be talking about whoa, balance, or what you call balance in science, which is center of gravity. Now, the center of gravity is a place you can find in any object where it's equally balanced on all sides. I balance this spoon on the eraser of this pencil, and where the spoon is balancing is its center of gravity. But if I take this little tiny dime and put it in the spoon, it doesn't balance anymore. But if I put the dime in the spoon and balance it in a different spot, I can find the new center of gravity, and the spoon balances again. Here's another experiment you can do. Take a potato and a ruler or a stick. Try to balance the potato on the ruler. I'm gonna save us both a lot of time. It's really hard to do. The potato does have a center of gravity, but because of its shape, it's going to be really hard to find and really hard to balance. But if you take some forks and you stick them into the potato, you're no longer just trying to balance the potato, you have to balance the forks and the potato. And it gives it a very different center of gravity, which makes it a little bit easier to find and a little bit easier to balance. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's take a closer look at how the center of gravity works using our potato. No, that's too close. Back off a little bit. Okay, good. If you want to find where the center of gravity is, you can hang an object and draw a line straight down. Then hang it from a different spot and draw another line. Do this one or two more times and you can see where the lines meet is the center of gravity. If our potato was balanced on a stick, the center of gravity is a long way from the stick. So it's going to be pretty hard to balance. Now, let's stick some forks in the potato and try again. One line there, a line there, and a line there. And you can see that the lines all come together down here. That's right, the center of gravity doesn't have to be on the object. With the center of gravity way down there, when we try to balance the potato and the forks on the stick, you can see the center of gravity is much closer to the stick. That makes it way easier to balance. Now, because you're science maximites, I'm sure you know that a potato and forks is just the beginning. Everything you have in your house has a center of gravity, which means, theoretically, you can balance anything. Try it yourself. Find things around the house and see if you can get them to balance. And if you can't, try adding things to increase the center of gravity and make it a little bit easier. Here's another small experiment you can do with inertia. Take a stack of checkers or game pieces like I have here. Oh, or coins. Coins work really well. And a ruler or something else that's flat. This is the kind of stick they give you at the hardware store to stir your paint with. Now, you can knock checkers out of the middle of the stack without the stack falling over if you're very careful. You see, the friction of the checkers leaving the middle of the stack won't be enough to overcome the inertia of the rest of the checkers. Ready? Now, let's max it out. Oh, I have these pizza boxes and they should work the same way. You see, you get a stack and don't worry, I've already eaten all the pizza. And I put them on there like that. And now I need a ruler. And what I've got is this cricket bat. You see, it's got a nice flat edge just like the ruler. Now, if this works right, I can hit it hard enough to knock out just one or two pizza boxes and the rest of the stack should stay. Here we go, ready? <laughs> Science! Awesome. <laughs> and there you have it, Newton's first law. An object at rest tends to stay at rest and an object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. Usually there's a sign that kind of... Well, our inertia power dragster worked oh, really well. Camera. And now it's time for the <laughs> final step. Me, All right. riding it to glory. Okay. Now, I, I know it probably doesn't need saying, but don't try this at home. Not that I, I think you really can try this at home because this is kind of involved, but I figured I should probably tell you guys just in case you were tempted to try it at home. We know what we're doing. We know what we're doing, right, Chris? Yes. Yes, yes, we know what we're doing. All right, fire it up. 
Keep it going. Keep it going. All the way. Whoa. All the way. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Woo! How's that for inertia? Wow, look at that. That's amazing. Cool. High fives! Yeah! <laughs> Let's recap. The weight of the tires, as well as how fast they were going, provided enough inertia to accelerate me and the weight of the dragster. The objects in motion, the wheels, wanted to stay in motion so much, they moved the dragster all by themselves. Inertia and Newton's first law of motion. Thank you for joining us on Science Max. Let's go again. Your oh, turn? Yeah, my turn. Okay. Woo. Our small balloon-powered car works because of Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The air pushing out the balloon this way pushes the car with the same amount of force this way. So, in order to max it out, the plan is just to get a bigger wheeled cart and a much bigger balloon. So, everything should work out the same. Okay, so, sir. Oh, I thought what we would do is I would, in order to max out the balloon-powered car, what we need is a cart to start with, and then I ride it. And we have a giant balloon, and then I go. Do you have a giant balloon? Ha! <laughs> giant balloon! So, step one, uh, Sarah blows up the balloon. Okay. Use this air compressor, it'll probably be a lot faster. Sarah and I get to work blowing up the balloon, and it takes a long time. A very long time. Okay, human-sized balloon-powered car test. Take one. All right, Sarah. You got it? Yeah. Okay, let it go. Okay, go, go. Let it go. I and did. You did let it go. I just let go. Nothing is happening. It's not coming out fast enough, and you're a bit too massive. I don't think it's gonna work like this. Really? Yeah. Okay, uh, balloon powered car test two. No fill. I'll just take it. And... <laughs> what happened? Uh, I don't think it worked. The balloon popped. Phil, are you okay? This is why you wear protective eyewear. Uh, yeah. So, that didn't work? No. No. Should we get another balloon? Uh... I think uh, we need something else. Okay, well, the air coming out of the balloon just what, didn't have enough force, so. We need the air to come out with more force. Yeah, do we get, what, a bigger a bigger balloon? I don't think that's gonna work. I don't think it's that. I think we need something with compressed air. Oh, like, like a scuba tank or a... Fire extinguisher, something like that. Yeah, that, that's what we need. Okay, sure. Well, we can, all right, so I don't know if that's safe to do that, so we'd have to build, a, like, a cage or yeah, something. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna work on this. All right, well, back... Back to the drawing board. So okay. what we should do is we should get we need a... need to find these tanks. You get the tanks, and then we make a, like a frame out of aluminum or something. Okay, that could work. Yeah, That's they can hold idea. the tanks, so yeah. they're safe. And then what we should do is... Who was Isaac Newton? He was a mathematician and probably number one on the list of top scientists of all time. Albert Einstein said, Isaac Newton was the smartest person that ever lived. You've got to be special if Einstein is calling you smart. Newton's three laws of motion was a huge idea, but did you know Newton also came up with the idea of gravity? The famous story is that in 1666, Isaac Newton was sitting under an apple tree when he watched an apple fall and wondered why. Hey everyone, I just invented gravity, which was a big relief because up until then, everyone was just floating around. Okay, so it didn't happen like that. He didn't invent gravity. He gave a name to this invisible force and then described how it works. Not only did it make things fall down, but it was the same force that kept the moon circling the Earth and the Earth circling the sun. And he invented a new kind of math to explain how. We now call it calculus. See, I told you he was smart. He's very smart. Uh, the pool will be closing in five minutes. No, no, I'll do it. No, no, I'll wait. Taste the wrath of my water balloon! I don't believe it really sells it if he doesn't smash the water balloon. Does he? 
Good morrow to you. <laughs> I got my feather in my my face. Oh, you got it. Be kidding me.